welcome back. Looking forward to sharing with you in this session some ways to really activate the legs and to activate that sense in our emotional system, if you like, of creating resilience. And of course, that means that we build in slightly stronger strength building postures, not those we've already covered in terms of plank and downward facing dog, but stepping into poses which ask us to balance more steadily and to hold our torso weight over our legs. So Eagle is going to be our um, posture focus, if you like, in this session. I'd also like us to work on slightly more advanced breath work. So we're gonna start making ourselves comfortable and exploring Viloma breath. This is one of the very key yogic breath work exercises. And Viloma breath invites us to take our inhale up in three stages and on the exhale, the same thing. We come down in three stages. So it is still one inhale and one exhale. It's just that you've clipped it into three sections, if you like. I also like to look at that as activating the navel as we breathe in, then the diaphragm, and then followed by the chest. And then of course the opposite direction as we exhale, leaving the breath away from the chest, pulling through the diaphragm, and then exhaling out by pulling in through the navel. So let's come to a nice, comfortable seated pose. You may be on a cushion, you may be on a block. You may decide not to sit on anything, but I do find it helpful to bring up the hips a little, particularly at the beginning of class when the spine might feel a little bit more stiff than I hope it will when we finish this session. So find the back of your sit bones when you sit across your block. Settle into your breath. Always breathing in through the nose and out through the nose unless we are otherwise directed. And just beginning to have a sense of how it feels to move the breath over those parts of our body, our navel as we breathe in, our diaphragm and then all the way to the top of the chest, exhaling from the collarbones and the chest through the diaphragm and then squeezing out through the navel. Good. With all breathing exercises, eyes can be open, eyes can be closed. It's whatever makes you feel more comfortable. very much a personal practice when you are alone or when you're sharing this video with maybe a, another person in your home. It's still a very private experience, much more than when we're in a group class. So give yourself time to bed into that feeling of coming back to your practice. And then let's place the hand now in Gyan Mudra, the thumb and the index finger touching. And let's start with our Viloma breath. Inhale and let that come into your belly. Then your diaphragm. And then right up to the collarbones. Exhale, those three stages, leave the collarbones. Feel it filter through the diaphragm. Exhale, squeezing the navel. Inhale, exhale, Let's count it through, inhale one, two, three, exhale one, two, three, inhale one, two, three, Exhale, one, two, three. Inhale, one, two, 
three, exhale, one, two, three. Last round, inhale, one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Good. Take a natural inhale and a smooth exhale. Lovely. Give the eyes a blink if they weren't already open. And then take the legs out in front of you. Just give them a little stretch and give them a little bump through the mat. We're going to come into a stack through the legs. So this is going to feel nice and stretchy around the outside of the legs. I have two options for you, so I'll show you those. I'm going to put my right leg out of my way. I'm going to fold my left leg. So if you focus on looking at this left leg, you want your knee in front of your hip, your left foot out to the side. That means you can then pick up your right leg and bring it over the top, stacking your right knee on top of your left knee or to the best of your ability. Foot lays to the side just as the other one does. So give that the option if that's working for you. If it feels excruciatingly tight and just way too much or you have knee damage or ankle or foot damage and shouldn't have your legs in this shape at all, let's look at another option. So you will have your right leg out in front of you and simply take that shape in your left leg and pop it down like so. So you've got your left knee on top of your right knee and the foot out to the side. So you've got two options. Obviously, you're going to switch those around in a moment. So just decide what works better for you. And then when you've got the shape that gives you a nice stretch, let's bring the spine up nice and tall. Option to sit on the block or if you want to find a little bit more stretch, I would maybe suggest moving the block out of your way. So I find it preferable not to sit on the block, but everybody is different up here in the sides of the legs, particularly into the piriformis muscles, which run up the side. So just be aware of what works for you. You've got two or three options there. Bring the spine up nice and tall. Really get into that nice deep breath. That's why we began with our breath work, because that is going to help you ease and release the tension out of the side of the legs. Good. Very gently, if it feels OK for you to do so, bring your fingertips forward. So just explore any more room you may have up through the legs. Please don't worry if there's no forward momentum. It's very normal as it feels tight enough where it is. Again, breathe in and out. Keep it through the nose for the moment, please. And if you're very flexible in the side of the legs, you're still bringing yourself forward. You can lay on top of the legs, but try not to round out between your shoulders. Try to bring yourself down nice and long. Maybe bring your elbows to the floor. Good. Very, very slowly we come back up. We stay like this and then we're going to twizzle the arms just to add to it. So we're going to have an eagle shape through the arms. So just bring both elbows up in front of you and stack the elbows in line with the shoulders. And we're going to bring the left elbow inside the right elbow. So you can see that I've just crossed over, connected my elbows, the forearms will meet. And then you may just be able to reach the fingertips of the right hand into the palm of the left. Please don't worry if you can't do that, they can stay like this. So find your eagle arms here. And then when we breathe this time, we're gonna inhale the elbows up. You're gonna really feel an intense stretch around the back of the shoulders. As you exhale, let the elbows come back. 
Inhale, lift the elbows up. Exhale, release them down. Work with your own shape. So just notice what works for your shoulders and what feels too much. Keep the jaw relaxed as you breathe in to lift the elbows up, as you exhale to bring the elbows back into the middle. Just three more. Inhale up. Exhale, bring them in. Inhale up. Exhale, bring them back to centre. Last time, inhale up. Exhale, back to centre. Release the fingertips down to the floor. Relax, try not to move your shoulders, please. Relax your jaw, there's no need to move anything. Find that release and let's switch everything around. So carefully pick up the legs, we're gonna switch the crosses over. So for the first option, I've put my left leg out of the way, I've tucked my right knee in front of my hip, and then I'm gonna pick up my left leg and bring it over. Here's where I need to remember all those lefts and rights and all the different options for you. On a block or not on a block, totally up to you, on a cushion. Feet are at your side if that works for you. Don't worry if this top knee is a little high, but if it feels too much and you're struggling to find this particular position, let's switch it around. So you will have your legs out for a moment and then you will pick up your right leg and take it over the top of the left leg. So you've got this option, you're still going to feel a stretch through both sides of the legs. So choose what feels right for you and come back to it. Good. And once you've got this position, just take a few breaths. And then start to work your way forward. Breathing into it. Maybe noticing quite a distinct difference on one side more than the other. I certainly always do. Try not to grimace your face. Doesn't help to tighten up the jaw. Just let it relax. Let the sit bones sink either through the block if you're on it or through the mat underneath you. And fold forward. If you've got one leg outstretched, you may find it easier to fold forward. There's a lot of folding in yoga. It's very important to us because it really helps to massage the inner organs as we breathe deeply in through the nose and out through the nose. And that might help you to release and bring your chest forward. Heart centre leads. And then again, slowly come back up. Bring both elbows up. Last time we put the left elbow inside the right. So this time we'll put the right elbow inside the left, connect them, draw the forearms together, and then just gently bring the fingertips of your left hand to meet the thumb and palm of your right hand. Once you've got that position, you should have your elbows out in front of the chest. Let's take an inhale and draw the arms up. And exhale and release them down. Inhale through the nose, bring them up. Exhale through the nose, ease them down. There's a lot to think about now. Huge stretch around the shoulders, big stretch around the side of the legs. A lot of it very intense. I fully appreciate that. So you just do your best here. Last one, big inhale, lift the elbows. Exhale, release the breath, release the hands, drop the fingertips down, keep the neck long, give yourself a moment. And then carefully, easier said than done, unlace the legs from whichever position you've chosen. Give the legs a cross. Give yourself a little circle just to soften off all that space around your hips, your piriformis muscle, 
and the side of the glutes. Good. As we come back to centre, one last breathing exercise I'd like to do with you, which we call lion's breath. And this does give the opportunity to exhale through the mouth. And I like to do this after that incredibly intense stretch to really just release whatever was left behind. So let's touch our fingertips down to the side of us. As you breathe in, lift the arms with energy and make claws with the hands. As you exhale, reach those down to the side with real purpose and sigh it out through the mouth. Two more. Inhale up. Sigh it out through the mouth. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Lovely. Take the legs out. Give them a stretch, give them a bump. Let's tuck them underneath us and let's get moving and flowing. Bring yourself down to all fours. We've done enough breath work, so we're not gonna use cat and cow today. We're gonna to tuck through the toes. We're gonna to reach our way back and we're gonna take a nice deep stretch. Lift into the fingertips for a moment. Take a little wiggle here. Settle that space between the shoulders. Good. Bring yourself back to all fours. Stretch the left leg out behind you. We came to this in our very first session together. Just drive through the hands to push back through that foot and release. Same on the other side. Reach the right leg back in space. Really push through the heel and push down through your arms. Good. This time take the knees to the width of your mat. Draw the arms wider with it. So let's take the hands off the mat. Touch your big toes together and bring the nose down and the forehead down. Give yourself a nice big inhale. As you exhale, sink through the hips, side out through the mouth. Two more of those. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Lovely. Gently bring yourself up, plant the hands down. Wiggle your way up to downward facing dog. When you get there, have a good pedal of the back of the legs. Relax your head and jaw. Take a look left and right. I want us to work into some rotation in downward facing dog. Not straight away, I want us to be a little warmer before we do. Please put your weight down through your index fingers and your thumbs. Notice how that feels. So really keeping the shoulders stable, very important for when we rotate in this position. Let's take the right leg out behind us, straight leg, let it come out, then let the heel come down towards the glute, open it out a little bit, keep length through both arms, don't collapse that right arm. Lovely, gently roll and step. We're gonna step this left knee and foot to the outside of that left hand. Drop the right knee down, come up onto the fingertips. Take an exhale and press up to pyramid pose. Inhale, look forward. So remember this again from your first session, fold. Do a couple more, inhale, exhale, inhale, Exhale, so quick way to find some length in that hamstring. Bend into that left leg and then gently take yourself back to downward facing dog. The right leg comes up. Create length first, then bend and open. On an exhale, start to weave your way forward, make space through the spine and step that foot to the outside of the right hand. Left knee comes down. Inhale, rise up onto the tips of the fingers. Exhale, tuck, hop and lengthen into your pyramid pose. Inhale, exhale to fold. Inhale to squeeze forward with the heart centre. Exhale to fold your way back. Last one, inhale, exhale, step it back to downward facing dog. 
ripple your way over like a caterpillar towards plank, picking up and rolling and rolling and looking for space. Two more of those, a bit pacier than we've done them before. Chin to chest and start to roll. Push the heels away. Roll back to where you were. Last one, inhale. Exhale and roll and find your way back. Left knee comes into the chest. Roll and step to the inside of that left hand. Pop the knee down. This time, let's try and take a nice twist. Let's lift up through the left arm. Reach back. If you can pick up the back foot and reach for it, please do so. If that's not there for you, doesn't matter. Keep the foot down, but keep that arm reaching round behind you. Spin the chest up. Release the foot, look forward, lengthen through back leg. Step your way back to plank, roll back to downward facing dog, right knee comes into the chest, roll, use your spinal mobility and your core, and then step the foot forward, drop that left knee down. Look forward, then take a big inhale, sweep the right arm like an arc, and look back for your back foot. Flip it up if there's space, and reach for it. Lengthen through the chest. Couple of breaths here, relax the jaw. Release the foot. Lengthen through back leg. Find a really straight left leg here and then step it back to plank. Roll to downward facing dog. Take a nice deep bend into the knees. Just really bounce it softly here. Push the hips back. Really push down through the thumb and index finger and step the left foot to the outside of the hand and then the right foot take your toes off the mat take a nice big inhale here into a deep squat exhale stand up nice and tall inhale and lift exhale sit down nice and deep inhale put those hands down between the knees step your way back to downward facing dog take a nice deep bend into the knees and then gently step your right foot to the outside of the right hand, then your left foot. Inhale up into your squat, keep the chest lifted. Exhale, stand tall. Inhale and lift. Exhale, come down. Inhale, put the hands down. Let's step back with the right foot first to downward facing dog. Good. You can continue stepping if you want to just add a hop forward with the feet, then that's fine. Take a nice deep knee bend, take an inhale. On your exhale, step or spring the feet to the outside of the mat. Inhale to lift. Exhale to stand tall. Inhale. Exhale. Plant the hands down. Step back. Another one of those. Inhale. Take that nice deep knee bend. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Take an inhale when you get to downward facing dog. Exhale, push the heels away. Relax the head. Take a little bend in the knees. See how it feels this time to walk or jump the feet between the hands. So maybe we'll start with a walk forward. Bending in at the knees, inhale. Exhale, step and fold. Notice that's much easier than when your legs are straight in downward facing dog. Reach for the toes, inhale, pull the chest forward. Those of you who've practiced a long time, you might have your legs straight. I would advise a little bit of softness in the knees here. Those who are new to the practice, of course, have your knees nice and bent. Pulling the chest forward. Exhale, fold nose to knees. That's your opportunity to lengthen through the back of the hamstring. Bring the legs towards straight and bring the hips up high. Release, take a massive inhale to pick yourself all the way up. And to release the hands at Namaste to he. Let's get the shoulders feeling nice and open. Inhale, pick your arms up. Exhale, I'd like you to draw the arms open towards the cactus. So I hope you can see you're gonna flex through your fingertips, open the elbows sideways, See if the shoulder blades can slightly meet. 
tuck your tailbones underneath you, two more. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. So we've got some movement happening there through the shoulders. Bring the elbows together, fold over the legs. Look forward, put the hands down, step to plank. This time we'll come to the floor, so it's a full vinyasa movement. Let's put the knees down first. Use the front of your shoulders as you tuck your elbows and drop your chest. We'd like us to come up and do that two more times. Because I'm not with you, I want to be sure that you've got the right feeling through the front of the arms and shoulders. Inhale and pick straight back up. Take your inhale while you're up here. Make sure the shoulders are stacked over your wrist. Pull up your tummy muscles now and make sure you can feel some part of the inside of your arms touching the side of your body. Please don't let the elbows wag to the side. So we keep this about the shoulders and the side body as we come down on exhale, as we come up on inhale. Last time coming down, exhale to the floor, lovely. When we get there today, let's keep our toes plugged into the floor. And then let's lift the chest and just the arms up. So I want you to experience coming towards Cobra without force through the shoulders and the arms. We all tend to do that. So use your chest. Don't use the lower back. Try to keep that down by pushing your feet into the floor. It's counterintuitive, I might add, because your feet want to come up and meet your arms. They're not going to yet. Take a couple more breaths here. Amazingly, this makes you feel warm. It's really efforting into that upper back. Bring the hands underneath you, tuck the toes, roll through to your downward facing dog just to stretch off that lower back. Inhale and lift a downward facing dog. Good. Again, take a nice deep bend into the knees. Look forward where you're headed between the hands and step. Take a little fold over the legs. Inhale, pull yourself forward. Exhale, start to lengthen through your legs, fold your nose to your knees. Release, inhale, bring the arms all the way up. Exhale, bring the hands to Namaste to heat. Let's take three more of those lovely shoulder movements. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, open to cactus. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, open. Inhale up, tuck the tail, exhale, open. Inhale up, exhale, fold all the way forward. Look forward, gently plant the hands down. Step back through the other foot to your plank. Drop to the knees. Three drops up and down here. Exhale, chest and nose down. Inhale, straight back up. Exhale down, inhale up. Exhale down, inhale up. Lovely. Great practice for Chaturanga. Sit back for a moment. Come through over those arms again. Drop to the floor. And now let's take a full locust pose. Feet come up, hands come up. Can you hold a pencil between your shoulder blades? Can you lengthen through the feet and the legs? Can you take your thighs as well as your knees from the floor for three, for two, for one, hands come underneath. Reach back again to child's pose and lift up to downward facing dog. Good. Relax it out. Very gently, we're going to step the feet up towards the hands. See if it feels different when the knees are not bent. So you lengthen and step. Lengthen and step. Good. Fold the nose over the knees. Inhale, very gently come up and exhale and bring the hands back to Namaste to he. Good. From here, I'd like us to move our flow into using the full eagle pose. So we will inhale the arms up. We'll exhale the hands to prayer and we'll start to bend into the knees. So it looks like a mini chair pose. And then you're gonna pick up your left leg, take it over the top of your right leg, and then just take a little twizzle here so that we can sit deep 
into the back of our sit bones. Please keep the chest nice and lifted. And then from here, let's put the opposite elbow in. So take your right elbow inside your left and connect the arms. Gaze forward, maybe find a point on the space you're in. So on a wall in front of you and breathe here. Lift the chest, work into a deeper seat for three, for two, for one. I'd like you to unwrap the arms and gently come to standing. As you do, bring the left leg up, bring the hands to prayer, push that left leg away. Inhale, sweep it back. Let's use our warrior three position. Keep height through the chest here, keep length through the back leg. You've got a bent right leg, bend it more deeply, step the foot back with control, not as easy as I don't make it look. Drop the back knee down slightly, lift back through the chest. Breathe here, find your stability, find your quiet space in your mind. And then as we float down, let's do it nice and slowly. I want you to feel the outside of the right leg activated now as you put the left hand underneath the shoulder. Wrap the shoulder to the rib cage as you lift your right arm in full twisted lunge. Keep pushing back through the back leg. Bring the hand down, step yourself back. Pop your knees down to come through from plank or if you can do chaturanga, then come straight and slowly towards the floor. As you touch down, let's take a cobra, but let's hover the arms. So it's like a mini baby cobra, lifted chest. Get the upper back to do the work. Don't put the hands down yet. Then put the hands underneath you, lift and reach back. Inhale and pick yourself up to downward facing dog. Good. On the other side, from here, send the hips back, pick up through one leg, step it forward, follow it with the other. Fold the nose to the knees. Inhale to sweep up. Exhale the hands to Namaste to he. Standing on your left leg, and here's where you're going to notice which one feels more balanced. Very gently, take a little seat, start to think about left leg. So you've come to chair, now you've picked up your right knee and you've wrapped it over your left. Breathe deeply here, keep the chest lifted and put the right arm inside left and bring the hands together. Look forward. Keep lifted. You can toe touch if you need. Work for it. Lift the chest. For three, for two, lift the chest a bit more. For one, release and stand up out of it. Bring the knee nice and high. That's right knee towards chest. Find length through the spine. Push that right heel away from you. Inhale to sweep it back. We're going to keep this slow. And we're going to keep it strong. Lift through that back glute. Gently bend into the left leg. Reach back. Look for your space here. And then sit down through this lunge. This is a double bent knee lunge. Really work that length down through that back right leg. So hip flexor works hard here. As we come forward, we reach forward, we lengthen, use the outer side of the left leg, put the right hand down and lift through the left. Find your space here, breathe into it. As you exhale, the hand comes down. Continue the exhale as you're at plank and all the way to the floor. This time you can use Cobra, keep the hands underneath you, come up nice and slowly all the way through as you exhale back to child's pose and up to downward facing dog breathe it out let's move with just a little bit more pace one breath for each step forward 
fold nose to knees. This time, instead of coming all the way up, inhale straight to chair. Very gently take the left leg over the top of the right and then take the right elbow inside left, look forward. Couple of breaths, come out of this. Hands come to prayer, left knee comes up. Push the heel away from you. Inhale, sweep it back, keep the chest lifted. Exhale, bend in, step the foot back. And this time inhale and push the arms up and back, make space through the shoulders. So this back leg, it's neither totally straight nor bent, it's just giving you space to open your heart center. Exhale, let's float forward without the twist. We step to plank, we drop in a straight line or knees down first to the floor. We use upward facing dog now if that feels good for you. Move through child's pose. You've got the time or move straight back through downward facing dog. Exhale, push the heels away. Inhale, step up to the top of the mat. Exhale, fold nose to knees. Inhale, you're sweeping up to chair to prepare to stand on your left leg. Right leg comes over. Left elbow over the top of right, sit nice and deep. Couple of breaths, keep lifting the chest. On an inhale, rise up nice and slowly. Bring your right knee up. Exhale, push it away. Inhale, push back in space. Exhale, bend into that left leg. Reach back through the right. Inhale and sweep up. Open the heart here. We float forward on exhale and down to the floor. And on inhale, we lift up with facing dog. And on exhale, we push back. You can use child's pose and exhale the heels away. Good. Couple of nice deep breaths here. Here, now the body is warm, is where I'd like us to look for a rotation in downward facing dog. This will also really help you in your practice to understand the difference in the strength of your shoulder and arms on each side. So I'm gonna ask you to leave your right hand where it is. Start to pull up your tummy muscles now, all the way back with your pelvis, and then take the left arm away and reach it round your right leg. Take a little twist, gaze underneath your right armpit. <sighs> Exhale through the mouth if you need it. And then very gently release. Go to put that left hand down. Same thing on the other side. Reach the right arm back. Reach round to the side of your leg. It can be thigh. And then twist. And breathe. And then very gently put that right hand back where it was. Check in as you bring the knees down. Let's use cat and cow here because I think the shoulders will appreciate it. Take a flex and you're inhaling here at cow. Exhale, round out. Find lots of space underneath those shoulders. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Good. Sink your way back. Push your arms out in front of you at child's pose. And then I want us to come back to what looks like cat and cow, but you're going to retract and protract your shoulders. And this will make great sense to your plank in a moment. So bring your hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath hips, feet tucked back at least hip width apart. You're not doing cat or cow. You're staying pretty straight through the spine. So have your navel engaged for yourself. And I'd like you just to drop all the tissue and space between your shoulders down. So what it feels like, I don't know if it looks like this on the video, is that your shoulders came up towards your neck and ears a bit. And it should feel like 
the shoulder blades are almost touching or at least if I dropped a pencil between your shoulders it would be kind of hidden away okay and then on an exhale I'd like you to push through your hands and round out between the shoulders your navel will come up high with you really push through the floor find more space find more space and feel stretched across your shoulders good come to neutral take an inhale and then gently let the space between the shoulders drop away notice how it feels that is all take another inhale as you exhale take a powerful movement to push and protract your shoulders and really feel into the space this is so key to our entire vinyasa practice one more time release come to a neutral relax your head and jaw take an inhale on an exhale just carefully release and focus on drawing the shoulder blades together and letting the chest dip between your shoulders take another inhale as you exhale round out push up push up push up you'll find your tailbone comes underneath you really find space across those shoulders chin to chest good sit back through the feet and heels so sit back into a toe stand for a moment so it's strangely challenging just to organize the shoulders but it is so important because too often we see plank with the collapsed space between the shoulders the navel becoming a little soft and the lower back having a bit of a dip. So now I want you to come back to plank and just feel how great it is when we've got everything lifted. Bring the hands down, shoulders over hands, reach back as though you're stretching and then come into your plank. And you check out now for yourself, can I find more space between the shoulders? Can I push through the floor? Have I brought up my diaphragm? Have I lengthened? Now can I look forward in this position? And imagine how much you can do if you're here. You know, we can bring a knee in and a knee in and out, one to the side, another to the side, and still hold that position between the shoulders. Much more challenging, but much more powerful. Roll it back to downward facing dog. Your arms are gonna feel it now. Everything feels a little tired and this is really okay. It shows us that we're doing the good work. Bring both elbows down to the floor. Bring them down nice and close so you can interlace the hands and just send yourself back. You're now in your dolphin pose. Try to keep your head just a few centimetres at least away from your mat. And again here, what can we do with it? How can we play with it? Do we want to lift a leg into the air? It doesn't matter which. Do we want to drop it down? And then maybe switch to the other side. So just notice how it feels. Keep gazing in between your elbows, finding space. So lots of little things you can do to get this moving. Now draw your nose towards your thumbs, touch it down. Inhale and push back. Let's do two more of those. Rock forward, nose to thumbs. Send yourself back on an exhale. Can you pull your tummy up tighter, tighter, tighter? Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, rock back. Now you should feel it in your shoulders. Bring your knees down. Relax back in a shell position. So we drop the hands behind us. We fold the nose down. We fold the forehead down. Good. And many of you know that is your prep work for headstand position. So if you have headstand in your practice, please feel free now to take it for a few moments and enjoy it. Equally, come back to Dolphin, enjoy it just as much, and really feel like you're pulling up, up, up and lengthening. So either option for everybody. Make sure as you bring those elbows down they are just inside the line of the shoulder so we're not here we're nicely tucked we interlace the hands to support us this is the safest position for shoulders um, possibly in our last session we'll come to more open hands but let's start here because I know it's safe and I know it's sound lift the hips up nice and high and enjoy being up here in this slightly more strong feeling of a downward facing dog 
head should be totally free enjoy being here mess around with it lift your legs up do whatever little options feel good for those that want to think about headstand and you might want to be in front of a wall just look at the space you're going to drop your a crown of your head it's just inside the hands that's why the hands are there now walk and walk those feet in as far as they will go and you take a tuck and it's almost second nature and then you choose how you want to bring your legs up but you're on your forearms you're not on your head as much as you think right flex through your feet use your core squeeze your glutes together and come down nice and gently fold the knees whichever option you took and they're just as strong as each other dolphin and headstand just as strong there's not one better than another reach your fingertips forward fold the chest down give your shoulders some space and very gently bring yourself up we've got time just to turn ourselves around and bring ourselves to the middle of the mats we're going to lay back we're going to take something called an active shavasana because in an hour it's very hard for me to fit it in so roll back and just start to relax the body completely. For anyone that has difficulties in the shoulder, um, believe it or not, I am one of those people. So a lot of tightness for some people in the shoulder, the front of the chest and the back of the chest. I want us to do a lovely, simple physio style breathing movement to help us engage the shoulders. And I like this at the end of a session more than I do the beginning. I'll just explain why. The hands rest at your side. The body is nice and long. Let it start to relax. And when you feel ready to inhale, just lift the belly and lift the arms. Take them up and they're behind you. As you exhale, can you push each of your ribs onto the mat behind you? This tightens your navel and it picks your arms up and they gently float and drop next to you. So your inhale, as always, is this natural curve to the spine. I want you to imagine running a kid's car under your lower back. Your exhale, find the back of your ribs gluing to the floor. Then your diaphragm comes down, your navel pulls down to the floor. That is what activates your shoulders and arms to come back over. Let's do a few more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Front body is soft and open. Back has flexed. Exhale. Feel your lower back and your upper back glue to the floor. Naturally let the arms come back over. One more. Inhale. And exhale. Now, did that give you a sense of not only mobilising the shoulders, but understanding the responsibility of our core positioning during an inhale and an exhale? I hope so, because now you're going to inhale as you lay here flat. And you're going to float your arms up ahead of you. As you exhale, you're going to push the ribs down, roll and sit and lift up lovely and high. Good. And at this position, can we get that lovely straight line all the way through from the shoulders to the fingertips? Exhale, let's roll ourselves back down. And then gently take an inhale and an exhale. Wrap the hands around you, bring your knees into your chest. I'd like us to just take a few movements to work with this core, and also work with the heart centre together. Inhale, spread your arms open. And as you do that, take the legs out in front of you. As you exhale, draw everything in, give yourself a lovely cosy hug. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, squeeze in. All the while, can you keep your lower back to the floor? So it's all about angles. People say this a lot in Kundalini yoga, 
they say it's the art of angles. So really notice that here, that if I take the legs lower, I'm going to really put some pressure on that core. So that might be something you want to explore. If you have anything I don't know about in your core, you've had some sort of operation and keep the feet quite high and you'll put less activity and pressure in through the abdominals. If you're super fit, really low to the floor if you can. <laughs> Inhale and open. Exhale and squeeze. Inhale and open. Exhale and squeeze. It's a very traditional kundalini based abdominal exercise. Of course, it also opens the heart. It reassures us that we need to use third and fourth chakras in a lovely harmony. Last three and two and one. Let's bring the knees in. Let's keep the arms open. Let's drop the knees to one side. Doesn't matter which you've chosen. And then let your head fall the other way. So a variation on our supine twist, keeping our arms out. Use your obliques, that's the side of your abdominals to bring your knees to center. As you exhale, take them the other way and let your head be carried to the opposite shoulder. Inhale to come back to center. Exhale to take both knees over one way and fold across with your head the opposite way. Get a stretch through that shoulder and lower back. Last time, inhale up. Exhale, go the other way. Gently relax the shoulder and the neck and bring yourself back to centre. Bring the hands over your shins. Roll the nose towards the knees. Flex your toes and roll forward and back. Again, this is your core that helps you to roll. Also very noisy if you've eaten. Bring yourself up nice and comfortably and take the opportunity to sit on a block. Because I like us to be able to have our block or our cushion to sit on at the end of our session together so that there's no effort bringing up the spine. You've done some really good hard work in this session and we want the spine to now feel nice and steady and comfortable. The only area I don't feel that we have touched on yet in this session is the neck. And especially in dolphin, one thing I notice more than any other is tightness. I notice this, I might add in myself, as well as when I'm in a group class and observing the space in the room. So if you noticed you found any tightness when you're trying to work on strengthening your shoulders, Let's just finish by letting go of that. So I'd like you to put your left hand at your side. Either your fingertips will just touch or maybe the whole of the hand. And then very gently just start to rock your right ear to your right shoulder. So as long as you've got some connection with the mat, some sense of anchoring yourself through this left side, some tightness through the diaphragm, pull the rib cage down, pull the abdominals in to support the spine. The most important thing in neck stretching, and it will also stretch your shoulders by the way, is to go slow and to be very methodical in the alignment of your position. You can bring up your right hand and just rest it over the head and use the lightest pressure of your arm to bring your ear closer to the shoulder. Breathe in through the nose deeply, out through the nose deeply. Good, one more, let's breathe out through the mouth. I actually fancy doing another, so let's do that. Inhale, exhale. 
Good. Please don't pick your head up yet. Put your right fingertips on the right side of your face and help your head back to neutral. It will need that support. Really good. Quiet through the shoulders, bring the right hand down. Touch the fingertips to your floor or your mat. And then very gently start to take the left ear to the left shoulder. A lot of my cues have to be very verbal for obvious reasons. But if I imagine myself in your space with you now, I may be suggesting to be careful of what's going on with the chin. Don't let the chin come here to the shoulder. That's not the stretch. Keep the chin equal. I want to imagine that your head is in a vice and just drop, drop, drop the left ear to the left shoulder. Chin stays out of the question. And then very gently notice your spine. Keep that length all the way up so that we isolate the neck. And then gently take your left hand over to the right side of your head and just relax it. Be really aware we can be so much tighter on one side than the other through the neck, just as we can in many other parts of the body. So take it easy. Can you let go of this right shoulder? Can you soften the fingertips towards your mat? Can you totally relax your jaw? I often say in our group classes, if you drool out the corner of your mouth, you've got it. So as you're on your own, maybe, or only with another, then it's okay, have a drool. It shows that you are relaxed. And so many of us, especially teeth grinders at night, all those layers of tension, you need to be drawn out. And breathe in through the nose, out through the nose, in through the nose, and out through the nose. Let's take those last couple out through the mouth. I find it makes such a difference here. Good. Put the left hand on the left side of your face and help it back up. Good. Bring your hands down into your lap. So again, this is contemplation mudra. It means there's no activity from the shoulders or neck. Can I invite you in your space to make absolutely no movements now through your shoulders, your chest or your neck, however tempting that might be to some of you. Just breathe it out. There is no need to move anything. Relax the eyes. Inhale deeply, exhale completely, inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose completely, inhale and exhale. Lovely. Bring your hands to your heart's centre. Let the palms begin to rub. Really take that energy from where it was resting at the shoulders, draw it into your palms and create heat. Draw the hands to the center of the heart. Inhale, breathe them up onto the crown of your head. And here we say, peace to all. At the forehead, light to all. At the throat, truth to all, and at the heart centre, love to all. My soul honours your soul. Namaste.